With Production Premium CS6, it's no longer necessary to wait around for files to render. With the new Adobe Media Encoder CS6, you can actually use it to render files in the background or render them at off times where you're not actively using the computer. Um, all the different tools from Premiere, After Effects, and even Adobe Encore all can utilize the Adobe Media Encoder for rendering files. Let me show you how this is set up. First off, just to be aware, Premiere Pro, After Effects, all these different tools inside of the Production Premium Package all actually share a, a special memory manager, and this is what makes this technology possible. So whether you're in Premiere, After Effects, or Encore, you can open up this uh, panel for memory management, and you can see that I'm currently sharing a large pool of RAM between these different applications. So what this means is, if I'm actively editing in Premiere, or I'm actively designing my Blu-ray or DVD in Encore, um, I can have the media encoder actually running in the background, and I don't have to worry about it suddenly hogging all the resources of the system. Um, the uh, memory management system kind of takes care of that, and it gives the media encoder a little bit of lower priority in the, uh, in the equation, so that way it can be actually running in the background, it can be rendering files. Again, saving you time, you're not waiting around for, uh, with a progress bar on the screen, waiting for some file to render. So the way this works from Premiere, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take this timeline that I'm working on here, and we'll go ahead and send this to the media encoder. To do that, I'm just going to go to File, Export, Media. And this opens up uh, my uh, Export Settings panel here. We'll go ahead and choose a format here. In this case, I'm going to choose a, a broadcast format. Maybe I'm going out to a broadcast server. So we'll choose an XDCAM flavor. And Instead of pushing the export button, the export button would mean that Premiere Pro would actually do the rendering. Instead, we're going to push this over to the render queue. Well, one last thing I'm going to do, since I'm using an NVIDIA Quadro card in the system, there's a little checkbox down here marked Use Maximum Render Quality. If you're using an NVIDIA Quadro card, just something to be aware of, you can check this box, and even though the little pop-up says something about increasing the encoding time, because you have all of those cores on the GPU, it actually renders roughly the same time and gives you a little bit better quality if you're dealing with maybe scaling um, from 4K to HD. HD or you're going from HD to 720p, um, it, it gives you a little bit better quality at really no, uh, no time hit. So it's always a good idea to check that box if you've got the GPU portion of your uh, Mercury Playback Engine enabled. I'm going to go ahead and click the Q button. And this is going to go ahead and export out my timeline, and it's going to go ahead and push this over to the Adobe Media Encoder. And you can see here I've actually got this loaded up um, now ready to go in the media encoder. So if I wanted to, I could go ahead and start encoding this. Let's go ahead and make a couple more copies of this. So what I can do is I can take this one video and uh, I can go through and I can duplicate a different copy of this. And something new for the media encoder for CS6, we now have this list of user presets and groups listed over on the right hand side. So if I know I need to go out to an Android device, I can go ahead and twirl down these different presets here for different types of devices. Um, I've got a tablet. I want to run this at 960 by 540 resolution. So I'm just going to take this preset, drag it and drop it right over this instance of my video. And you'll see that it's now pulled the uh, format and everything from the preset directly over onto that file. So I can actually set up and have multiple deliverables ready to render in the queue at any given time. Now, something to be aware of, if I'm using the media encoder in conjunction with Encore, and we covered this in a previous video, but if you didn't get a chance to see that, there's a preference now inside of Encore where we can actually transcode our video using the media encoder so that it's not using up resources inside of Encore. So I'll go to Preferences General, and just again, make sure that I have this checkbox turned on. Uh, this makes sure that the uh, Adobe Media Encoder is going to be used for transcoding my assets. And when I'm working inside of Encore, um, at any point in time, this is a dynamically linked timeline from Premiere. So this hasn't been rendered yet. This is actually playing back from Premiere inside of Encore at this point. I just took the uh, live timeline and dropped it over here. But we're going to start getting this file ready for some Blu-ray authoring here. So we need to transcode that and get it into the various bits and pieces necessary for disk authoring. So to do this, I'm going to start by taking my project panel here and I'm going to use the, uh, the, the tilde key on the keyboard to blow that up full screen so I can show you guys a couple of uh, settings here. 
I'll go ahead and just uh, move these columns around so we can read this. And you can see that with one asset in my project, I can transcode this file for both DVD, standard definition, and for Blu-ray, which will be my high definition disk format. To send this to the media encoder, all I have to do is right click on this, and if I've already gone through, I can set my transcode settings. I'm leaving everything set to automatic for now. Um, Encore typically does a pretty good job of, of setting these up, but you do have the full capability of tweaking your settings inside of Encore. Um, but we'll go ahead and leave it set to automatic for now. And I'm just gonna transcode this. I'll right click on this and choose transcode now. So what this is going to do is it's actually utilizing the uh, multi-core, multi-threaded media encoder. It's running in the background and I can continue to work in here. I can continue to play back my video in its unrendered state here. I still have full performance and playback and I can continue to work inside of Encore, but this file is now being transcoded in the background. Now, when you're doing this, um, one of the key pieces of hardware that's necessary to be able to have this type of performance, you can see I have a lo lovely little uh, uh, progress bar here showing that this is uh, transcoding right now. But again, this is something that, uh, you know, doing all these different tasks, what's really driving a lot of this performance is uh, the main CPU in the system. So it is a good idea to uh, you know, have a processor, a modern processor um, that has multiple cores in it that can handle this multitasking that we're doing all at once. Today we're actually using the Intel Xeon E5 2600 line of processors, uh, really high performance series of processors. We're using a, uh, an HP Z820 uh, a tower system that actually has uh, dual sockets inside of it so that way we can put a couple of Xeon processors in the system and again it creates an environment where I don't have to wait around for things. Things can be transcoding in the background, I can be dynamically linking back and forth between these applications um, and I just have a lot of headroom, um, a lot of power that's sitting there waiting to be utilized and production premium will take full advantage of it. Now one other thing you might not be aware of about the media encoder I'm going to jump back over to the media encoder here and you can see that inside the media encoder it's gone through and it's actually got the uh, the different files are loaded up here for Encore. We've got our files from Premiere loaded up. Now something a lot of people are unaware of when I'm out in the field talking to After Effects artists, not too many of them are aware that you can actually load After Effects compositions directly inside of the Adobe Media Encoder and take advantage of this background rendering process. I'm going to go ahead and load an After Effects project. And the way you do this is just click on the plus inside of the Media Encoder. I've gone ahead and put a copy of an After Effects project on my desktop here. We'll go ahead and open this up. And when I do this, the Media Encoder uses dynamic linking technology to go over to After Effects and actually uh, break open the After Effects project file. And you can see now I have a list of all of the different comps within this After Effects project file. I'll go ahead and choose one of the lists here, click OK. And you can see now inside of the Media Encoder, we've got Premiere projects, Encore projects, uh, for transcode and now we have an After Effects composition loaded up and ready to go inside of the media encoder. Now for this particular file I'm not going to render it to MPEG. I want to maybe use this in uh, my timeline here. So in this case I'm going to go ahead and go into my uh, broadcast specifications here and I actually like using uh, this XDCAM HD is not a bad if you're looking for kind of a lightweight codec for rendering out an After Effects comp and you're going to use this in a, in a bigger Premiere project. I actually find that using the uh, XDCAM 50 is, uh, is a decent way to go about doing it. So from here I'll go ahead and select one of my presets that I have. Here we go, drag, drop, and now that's ready to render as well. Now another little piece of integration here with the media encoder, let me go ahead and switch over to um, Adobe SpeedGrade CS6. SpeedGrade is uh, known as more of a high-end finishing tool. So most of the output formats in SpeedGrade are really geared towards things like going out to feature film. So if you need to use uh, a different format, maybe you need to deliver an H.264 file that uh, a client's gonna watch on their tablet computer, for example, um, you probably don't wanna send them a series of DPX files. You wanna send them you know, the correct file for the job. So inside of SpeedGrade, if you render out uh, one of these higher end formats such as a, a DPX sequence, you can take things like DPX sequences into the media encoder as well. Let me switch back over to the media encoder. This time I'll click on the plus 
and I'll go into a folder I have of DPX files. So these are individual frames here. It's a whole frame sequence. Um, you can see these are uncompressed files. They're about eight megs a frame. I'll go ahead and select the first one here. Click this little checkbox here to say uh, Cineon DPX file. Click open. And the media encoder, again, treats this just like a video clip. If I click on the file name, or the file format name, you'll see I get a little preview window here. And from here, I can even scrub through this. And I can take a little look at uh, the DPX sequence, see how this is rendered out. And I can make additional changes here as far as the format is concerned. Or, again, go back to my preset list here and pick out the proper preset for my client. In this case, maybe we're working instead of an Android device, this needs to go out to an Apple device. And we'll go ahead and pick an iPad format here, a full HD iPad format, and drag and drop that on there. And from here, if I click the uh, Start Queue button, this is going to go ahead and start rendering these files. But again, this is actually all happening in the background. I can switch back to any of these different applications. Here we are back in Premiere. And again, I can scrub through my video. I can continue to play my video. And I'm going to get great performance in the applications. Um, thanks to the fact that this can run in the background, thanks to the fact that I'm using Intel Xeon processors, NVIDIA Quadro card, it's that kind of nice mix of all these different pieces of hardware working in harmony, and uh, I can take full advantage of all these different components um, and render those files in the background so I'm not looking at a progress bar. Thanks again for watching.